welcome again to A Minute with Lerato. Today we are celebrating love, the month of love in style. We are at a community project, Ladles of Love, dedicated to feeding the homeless in Cape Town. We're going to be talking to the founder, Denny, and three homeless people who are going to be talking to us and telling us about their involvement in the project. I'd like for you to welcome Gabby, who has been volunteering at Ladies of Love. Um, Gabby, welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Tell me, Gabby, why are you volunteering at Ladies of Love? Well, first and foremost, I was born to serve, and that's been my mission. And the fact is, you know, when I finish serving here, I feel so lifted. Because the fact is that you see, you put a smile on somebody's face. So I love what I do. I love helping people. I love seeing that people are being uplifted. What message would you like for people out there who don't know how to help out in the community? To What would you like to say to them? For those who, who are not helping, if you're not helping somebody else, our community will just go into you know, disarray because yes. we are all one. Yes. It's like we all drink from the same stream. And basically, if you just help one person in your lifetime, you make a change, you bring a change. And if all of us, imagine all these people help somebody, we will have such a great nation, you know, and we won't have people suffering. I'd like to ask you, Valentina, how did you end up being homeless? Homeless. Yes. When I was a boy of 16 years old, you see, uh -huh. I start uh, by breaking the white man's car, houses, and that made me on, sleeping on the street. Mm -hmm. I got no house, go to prison every time, mm -hmm. get out of prison every time I'm on the street. Till now I'm still on the street. Is it? I'm living here 30, 30, 31 or 32 years now, I'm living on the street. Um, did you always have your parents around when you were growing up? No, never. I was leaving them, you know, when I said I was 15, 14 years old. Mm. Get out that I didn't even know they're still alive or what. But mm. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I only care about myself. Mm. That's why I'm living on the street. And what would you say being homeless has taught you? It's a hard time to be outside. Mm. See, but there's no, I got no other way. I must have to sleep in the street. Mm. I was supposed to sleep sometimes in the gardens. Sometimes I sleep there by put the put beds. Everywhere I can find a place, place I have to sleep. And 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 if you were to find a job today, yes. would you would you leave everything, live your life, and yes. be and be? A of girl? course, I will do that. I will do anything yeah, to just to leave the street because it's hard life on the street. If I can get a job, I would be glad to be. So have you tried looking for a job? Yeah, I had tried before. I was working on a council for two, three years, mm -hmm. but they caught me with Taka and Kanza and go back to prison. So I'm now free now. For two years I'm now outside. Okay. And what would you like people out there who aren't homeless to know about homeless people? What would you like them to know about homeless people? I want them only to know on the, to loving on the cities is really hard. To survive you must always look around where you can steal something. And safety. Yeah, for safety at least you must look where you can sleep. And every time it's been hard to be a homeless. Especially to be a Sacrifice with people who you can love to and peace. You're staying in a house that's a bad life. But street life is no, no good life. Right now I'm with Abu, who has also been one of the beneficiaries of the soup kitchen. And today I'll be talking to him. Hi, Abu. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, thank you. What has being homeless taught you? Taught me, well, uh, to appreciate things, to appreciate life. And uh, that life itself is, is, is it's not about money, it's about life itself. Have you ever in your life, ever since you've been homeless, have you ever tried looking for a job? I'm, I'm, I, always, I always work. I always, I always look oh, for work. Even though, you are. Even, even though I'm homeless, okay. I always work. Because I do know that um, now that you're working, you are still homeless, but you are always, you are still working. You have a job that you know um, you can go back to. Yes, okay. I've, I've always worked. Okay. Um, and what would, you, what, what would you say, if now that you are working, what would you say is stopping you from getting a home, getting a house? Uh, financially, it's not, it's not, uh, uh, by, it's not, possible okay. if you look at cost of living today and uh, I mean I'm not 
I'm not working, uh, doing this for the money. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it for charity, and it's done from my heart. So, uh, whatever comes in my hand, I say thank God. I'm not concerned about. So it's not a matter of. So the money is not the thing. So I wouldn't have enough to go afford, uh, you know, to go and uh, live like a, uh, how would you say, normal living, as you would call it. What would you like to tell people out there about being homeless? What would, what do you think people don't understand about homeless people that you'd like them to know? The thing is that amongst homeless people, not all are bad. Uh, some are really... Like you are not bad? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, some, some really need a help, a hand, uh, but, uh, you know, there's very few that actually can reach out to them in the way they need it. And uh, I believe that handouts are not, not the answer. Handouts are not the answer. It's physically taking the person and uh, rehabilitating people into, in, in, into managing their lives. That means uh, allowing people to, be, to get skills and, and you'll be surprised. Something that is sustainable. Sustainable where they can, they can sustain themselves. Thank you so much. I don't want to keep you long. Hi Denny and welcome to A Minute with Lerato. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Um, I'd like to ask you, this, the project began in 2014. Tell me how have you managed to keep it going for five years and this has been you giving and giving and getting nothing in return. How can you keep doing that for five years? Um, well. Luckily, it, it began where I was doing it through the restaurant and um, I was getting everything. I was doing the food through the restaurant, I was buying the containers through the restaurant. So luckily I had that, that foundation to start on. But then it just started getting bigger and bigger. And people were starting to say, can we donate money, can we give you money, etc, etc. And then uh, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and more people were giving me money and then companies were donating money. And, it was all through social media and Instagram and friends and so it's just been the pure kindness of the public and the corporates out there. And there's a Sanskrit word, seva. Um, Sanskrit's a very ancient language that's not spoken anymore. And there's a Sanskrit word, seva, S-E-V-A, okay. which means giving... Seva, it's No, no, S-E-V-A, seva. Yeah, and it means giving of yourself, wanting nothing in return. And when you perform the true art of Seva, it's easy. And everything just becomes bigger than you actually did. You just become a vehicle of whatever life wants you, wants out of you, quite honestly. Alright, um, there, there's, there's quite a stereotype around homeless people that um, a lot of them are just in it because of drugs, they run away from home, um, they basically don't want to do anything with their lives. Uh, what would you say is the common reason why everyone ends up being homeless? Well, drugs is a big one, alcohol is a big one, uh, family abuse, running away from family abuse, uh, running away from gangsterism. Um, people are mentally challenged, they, the family can't support them or can't help them, so they end up in the streets. Um, so those are the those are the main reasons. There's also stories where um, uh, a man might have had a, a, a relationship with a woman and somehow the woman took everything from him. Um, there's been where women, you know, the alcohol, everyone's left him, his kids, his wives, uh, they've left him and he just gives up on life and ends up in the street. So, it, and, and you know, w when you become homeless, it's very easy to get sucked into homelessness. I, li I lived on the streets for 54 hours to, I took on the homeless yes, challenge yes, to experience yes. it. And let me tell you, I slipped into survival mode within hours of living on the street. You know, you, it's like, where am I gonna get my food? Where am I gonna get my meat? My, you know, where do I clean myself? Where do I go to the toilet? Mm. So you're thinking of these the basic, Things that you and I don't even think, think about, about yeah. those become your main priority now. Mm. So to think of, uh, you know, planning your future, <laughs> that's non-existent. So you literally, you get lost in homelessness. It's, and, and 
you know, homeless is not about people being lazy or whatever it is. You literally, you can get sucked in. And, and there's very, there's not much help. And, and there's a lot of self-sabotage. It's a mental, you know, poor thinking is, is it's a mental problem. And when you thinking of where to get your next meal, where to, where you're going to the toilet, where do you wash up, yes. you can't make good decisions, you know. So, so that is the challenge we have with homelessness. It is a part of society and we need to accept that. So, so, so you've been doing this for five years now? It's July like will be five over, years. Your five years, five years. Yeah. Um, how do you differentiate between uh, helping, how do you keep being able to help out and also not being taken advantage of? Well, I have a very simple philosophy. Um, I won't give money because okay. I, I, I believe that enables people to stay on the streets. They don't know what to do with the money and they'll use it for the wrong purpose. Yes. I always say give money to organizations that will do the right thing with it. So, you know, homeless people do come to me and they say, oh, I need 140 Rand to go and get my new ID. So I say, okay, well, let's go together and get your ID. Then all of a sudden they don't need the 140 <laughs> Rand. You know, so it's, 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 uh, they do. They come to me and they ask for money or they give me a story that they need to go home and they need a 200 Rand rent ticket. And I, I just don't do it. You know, I say, I, I said let's go and get a train ticket yeah. together or come to tomorrow yeah. and I always say come you tomorrow yeah <laughs> yeah I say come tomorrow mm -hmm. and we'll go and get a train ticket yeah. to see how serious they are and yes. they never come so I, that's how I don't allow them to take advantage I'm here to help um, food is a basic necessity and we all need to eat you, you, you were talking about enabling yeah. a lot of people who resist from helping out homeless people because the, they have this idea that they are giving them, um, they, they're actually not helping them if they are giving them anything. Yeah. No, I, you know what, giving money definitely allows them to live on the street and stay on the street. But giving food, is, as I said, it's a basic necessity. And if we don't give food, they're going to stay on the street. They're going to stay on the street and become more desperate. So when you become desperate, you then turn to desperate measures, crime, um, aggressive begging, digging in the bins. So by us keeping that basic needs, a human need that we need, we can't live without, it, it just restores a bit of dignity. It allows them to live their homeless life, like just without having to turn to desperate measures. So I believe if soup kitchens had to fall away, homelessness would become a major issue. Homeless people don't, are not criminals, they're just people that are homeless, that's it. Thank you very much, uh, Denny, thank you for that information and also giving us this time, I really appreciate it. And continue what you're doing, it is amazing, it is amazing, thank you very much.